All right. Max, put the gun in my hands, Max. I know what to do with it. I don't know how he sounds. I can't, I can now, only say Max. Now, Max, just drop the gun. <laughs> Everything's gonna be don't all be right, rash, son. Don't be Max. Goofy always said Maxie. Fake Maxie? Fans. Max, <laughs> I uh, because there's some. I'm 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 imitating a specific scene. Right. I don't know what the right. scene is, but he's like saying Max dramatically at him. Max, Max. Gorsh, Max. You Max, killed baby. Will you please just insert your first two fingers, real nice and gentle, like. <laughs> What was I doing when we were now, hanging out? Now, curl I was like doing Max. a voice curl, and like making him say heinous stuff. Curl your fingers and rotate your wrist at the same time. Oh, the Native American one. That's right. Yes. <laughs> My people. Max. My people. <laughs> now, put down the Native American headdress, Max. That's appropriating culture. <laughs> Father. I am a skateboarder. You can't stop me. I skateboard for, like, that's my passion. Father. Stop asking me to perform sexual acts on you, Father. I'm also one thirty-second Navajo and one half dog. <laughs> this is... <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> some that means some one sixteenth Navajo absolute degenerate did something horrible to a dog. No, I think it means. Uh, well, yeah, the, the dog in question is Goofy. Oh my God, is he all dog? You think he's not part human? I'm pretty sure he's all dog. <laughs> he's got that. Dog. Well, I don't know. Pluto's probably all dog. That's a good point. <laughs> Goofy's got a little something swimming around in his gene pool. <laughs> and one thirty-second Navajo. What is? Yeah, it? Navajo. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure if Navajo is uh, is uh, politically Ooh. correct. Oh my goodness! I've been told. I don't know. I don't know. Sh obviously, I've been told that that in the Diné language, Navajo literally translates to thief, and so they prefer to be called Diné. Oh. I thought it was something else. Is it? I might be totally wrong, so I don't know. This definitely sounds familiar. I didn't know it was specifically Nava. We could probably look it up right now. Yeah, we absolutely could. Uh, we aren't going to, but are we? Are we started? I think we started. I've been recording this whole time. <laughs> okay, I okay. think we have started. Hold on, I'm turning right, my phone right, down. Well. Welcome, everybody, to In the Buff. I'm your host, Chris. We've got Cody, Scott, and John here with us today. Hello. Hi. Good morning, Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us, Chris. What's up, y'all? Happy to stop by. Oh. Always happy to be on the show. Man. Big fan. I thought I was the special guest. You hear that crazy sh Goofy was saying earlier? <laughs> the rim, bro. He, was, he, he said some really heinous stuff And what's really crazy is that he didn't sound at all like himself <laughs> I didn't know him and Max were so close I'm like, pretty sure Max was like <laughs> Doing a colonoscopy on him or something I, I don't know if, Do you think it was a medical procedure? It seemed like Goofy was getting something out of it <laughs> Well yeah, some healthy test results I don't know about that one I don't trust Max His teenage son to do that i guess we'll find out in a couple of days he went to college they both did actually did he yeah did he? i wonder what their majors and you had were. a crush on the librarian didn't you who yes are we really gonna bring this up on the podcast disgusting to oh i thought asshole. we were talking That's about me chris you had a crush on the librarian of course miss marple sylvia marple from extremely goofy why movie. do you know names because <laughs> she was a very formative character in my childhood. <laughs> that scene where they're at the disco. I don't get the furry thing as much as I don't get, like, back rooms. Or, uh, you know what, another thing I discovered recently. I've talked about this before in the podcast. But uh, in regard to back rooms and uh, some other, you know, I like to call it Zoomer horror. I just don't get it. I don't get the horror. I, I'm not scared by it. I don't understand it. Another big thing, this isn't Zoomer horror at all. When people talk about thalassophobia, 
I feel nothing. Yeah. You've told me what Thalassophobia I've never, granted, is. Granted, I've never seen the ocean. I've never, certainly oh, never swam in it. That's what it is, is fear, is fear the, like, the deep water or something? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's specifically fear of the ocean, but don't quote me on that. Okay. It might be, like, diving underwater or something. Chris, you would know. I feel like that's something you would know. You're scared of a lot of things. I am. Yeah. But I, I, I haven't done a lot of research into the technical names of them. Chris, how far yeah. into the ocean will you walk? I won't. Not a single, not a single step. Um, the ocean wasn't made for people. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> Disagree. <laughs> you know, I was reading some uh, some theories actually that are kind of interesting. Have you guys heard of this aquatic ape theory? Yes. No. <laughs> Explain. Yes, I have. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people much smarter than I, think this is hokum and not and is total BS. But uh. I think it's interesting. At least it's an interesting thing to think about. This guy was putting forward the theory that the reason there is, quote unquote, not a missing link is because the ocean was our, quote unquote, missing link. He he says that apes back in the day, like, obviously went on land, but then became very coastal and started living off of fish and crabs and clams and mollusks. That's why if things are in the water, they just have less hair. If things are in the water, they need to stand up. If they're, like, not swimming. Uh, if things are in the water, they need to be able to make tools in order to crack open the hard shells uh, to get to the food. And he says that, that that was like there was a time in our millions of years of existence where we were just ape, aquatic apes. And then that aquatic ape species became humans. And much smarter people than me can explain why that's not the case, but I think, regardless, I think that's an interesting thing to think about. I never would even considered that. I guess I'm not totally following what you're saying. <laughs> Basically, so, he, he's saying that at some point there was a species of ape, the ape that was to become human. They adapted in order to live coastal lives. Okay. And then that became the predominant species that became human. Oh, Okay. I guess that makes sense, but it's not like apes came out of the ocean. No, 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 that's not what, aquatic ape makes it sound like that, but that's not at all what he's saying. He's saying there were apes, they became coastal, and then that, the, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not augmentations, the adaptations, the adaptations they gained for millions of years of being coastal apes, uh, allowed them to flourish and become the predominant species, mainly because he says that uh, the coastal life gave them more reason to build tools, so they got smarter faster. I guess. There's probably more resources abundant on the coasts. Uh, uh, the omega-3 fatty acids are used a lot in our brains, in our brain matter. So uh, another thought is that because we have fish more readily available, which is our number one source of omega-3 fatty acids, um, that Who that's why our brains that? grew so much more. Mm. It's it's I think it was named uh, after Daniel Omega Three. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> was his whole name, or was he the yeah. third Daniel Omega? Uh, Daniel Omega the Third, actually, <laughs> that makes more sense <laughs> than Omega Three. Isn't that a isn't that the bad guy from Extremely Goofy movie, Daniel Omega? <laughs> yeah, Daniel Omega the Third. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys feel like you're getting dumber as you age? Dog, let's look at who you're talking to. Wait, wh- do I do I feel what? Do you feel like you're getting dumber as you age? Maybe in certain aspects. I I think my I remember brain's... when I was a kid seeing like those DS games. I never had a DS, but seeing those DS games, like oh, you keep doing this and you'll have a like you boomers can keep playing this game and have like a, a good brain or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brain Academy or something. Uh, brain Age. Was the one I had. That sounds right. And I would get worried about that, like, as a kid, like, oh, will my brain become stupid? But I I don't feel, I feel, this It probably says a lot about me. I feel pretty eternal. I feel like the <laughs> same person I, I was when I was 11. I genuinely mean that. I, like the last. I feel like I haven't changed since I was in middle school. I have Like the last five changed. years, I really feel like things have gone downhill. I was driving to a Super Bowl party the other day, 
It's and Superb Owl, actually. <laughs> superb Owl. And it was probably a 15-minute drive, and I get there, and I realize I didn't have a single thought the entire drive. <laughs> <laughs> Just complete Dude, dead air. That sounds <laughs> that, that like happens. the best thing. It's, that does sound it's like kind of nice. scary. <laughs> I'm like, it's oh like, no. That's like why I can't sleep at night is because I just can't turn it off. Like, were you like paying attention to the road? Like, did you just get there and you're like, oh, f- I'm here now. Yeah, yeah, I was I was uh, aware of the road. And for a certain part of it, I was aware that I wasn't thinking anything. <laughs> like, my drive home. <laughs> like, you become aware of it. But like, hold on a second. Whoa, how long can I keep this going? <laughs> my, let, me drive, let me drive back to my apartment and then back here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, my my drive my drive home from work is turning into the exact same thing where half the time, like half of the drives, the whole time I'm just sitting radio silence and like the only thing that breaks me out of it is when I realize that I'm near the tree of life because uh, I'm a f- loser and I say hi and bye to the tree of life every day on my way to work and back home. I think that's cute. You're What's the loser. tree of life? Oh, it's dude, you don't tree. know about the tree life? It's just <laughs> no. it's just a random-ass tree in the middle of a field that reminds me of the tree of life from fucking Lion King. Gotcha. It's, uh, it's, on, it's on Diamond Mill. If we ever pass it, I'll uh, point it out to you. Yeah, I think you're thinking of the circle of life. <laughs> yeah, huh? I think that's from Lion King, is circle of life. Um, yeah. Did I ever tell you about the loneliest tree in the world? The Methuselah tree? No, the, that's a different tree. The loneliest oh, the- tree in the world was in the... It was fed from like an underground spring in the middle of the Sahara Desert just a tree just an acacia tree uh not even anything for like 200 miles uh just a marvel of nature just out there in the middle of the desert growing thriving vibing it got hit by a drunk driver and it killed it <laughs> <laughs> awesome Jesus. out in the world that's the one thing you can hit yeah Crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> Max. That's take incredible. The wheel. Take the wheel. Don't drink Max. and drive, kids. <laughs> <laughs> You'll kill a national treasure. <laughs> Have you guys heard this completely fake story about the fig tree in I think Turkey? Go ahead. Or maybe it was a date tree. Whatever it is. Uh there there was this this whole really cool story. Uh, it's not real, but it's a really cool story, <laughs> like a myth about this soul tree at the bottom of this like cave with it's like uh, do you call it a cave when there's an open ceiling i guess uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, you do it's nice really deep. I don't know deep cave and at the very bottom of this cave just uh where the sun can hit it was this one tree growing and there was a whole story it was pretty cool where a in the during some war like in the 1800s a uh soldier like as a token of his home he was fighting in turkey and he had brought figs or dates or whatever from like greece or something wherever they came from i don't know and he keep kept seeds in his pocket and he dies and uh falls down this huge hole and then the seeds grow and like it was one of those things that people thought was really really true because there was this really striking picture of this tree at the bottom of this this cave mm-hmm. uh, but it's not it's total bullshit there was a point in my life where I was really into famous trees. Weird. Yeah. That sounds oldest right tree, like tree alley. weird. Uh, oldest tree, tallest tree, biggest tree, um, coolest looking tree. I'm gonna put you on blast for a second. Um, I totally see you doing that so that you have something to talk about when somebody stops talking about what you want to talk about. Yeah. I yeah, totally that's... saw that. You just kinda added that to your fucking ammo pouch. <laughs> Cody, hey, yeah, trees are cool. <laughs> Famous Cody, trees are cool. Every everything you talk about seems to be an ADHD like hyper fixation. Damn, I just like a say, lot Chris? of different things. I'm just, I'm just saying, Cody might be neurodivergent. <laughs> We're all somewhere. When like Cody that. goes to bed tonight, he's just gonna f- go into incognito mode on his phone and look up f- bark. And he's gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, Wolf, look how baby. rough of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you have you guys heard? I don't know even what I'm thinking of. It's just something my brain is trying to tell me because you were talking about trees. 
It's some like network of trees that is technically the largest living organism. Oh, uh, Aspen clonal starts, colonies. It starts with <laughs> yep. a P. Is it not what he just said? It's, it's Aspen clonal colonies. Yeah, but like the yeah. big one has a name in America. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like Pooty or something. Like Ponto? <laughs> Ponto, that's what it is. You're right. Wait, what? Hold on, I'm confused. What are we? It's just this really. It's basically a forest, but it's just this huge network of interconnected trees that are all technically one big organism. Oh, I yep. have heard about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Cody, you seem like an expert. You want to explain? Yeah. Well, you know. Uh, yeah. It's a, a species of aspen that grows new trunks through its roots throughout the. Uh, it's actually more akin to a fungus. Or a mushroom. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. Than, that was than a tree. What I heard. Well, they also form uh, symbiotic relationships with a fungus. Disgusting. Uh, and that's the cool thing about <laughs> Pando. You know, speaking of Pandos, um, they're making a fourth p- Kung Fu Panda movie. Starring speaking Jack of, Black. Um, we shouldn't really talk about on YouTube. Yeah, it's oh. probably a taboo subject. What about Panda Files, though? Oh. Are there are, are there, there panda files? Files on pandas? Absolutely, tons of them. I hate you. What about podophiles? People who love feet. Mm. Why are you trying to find a group? I'm just mm. trying to, you know, keep the conversation rolling. He wants oh. to be associated. Yeah, John. With, why does uh, everything have to be about Tarantino? attacking your friends? Huh? <laughs> yeah, Tarantino would be the, the president of that group. Huh. Have you like it's it's really I wouldn't call it a problem, but in <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, there's that like really gratuitous scene of in the movie uh, theater w- in the movie theater where her feet are just in my eyes. Yep, And they're dirty. It's like Sharon yeah. Tate. Why are you just walking around barefoot? Disgusting creature. I'm, I I'm glad like, she's dead. I feel like I'm being attacked here because I walk around barefoot. Do you have dirty feet? Uh, don't more like often Chris. than not, I I'm I don't care about getting my feet dirty. It's more just like I I'm afraid of stepping on something. Yeah. Sure, I yeah, have absolutely. I don't want to hurt my feet because it's easy to clean my feet. I yeah. can just clean my feet, guys. Okay, here's the thing, right? If sure. the thing, if the yeah. aquatic ape theory is correct, we would have thicker soles on our and on our feet because seashells Whoa. on the beach just hurt. Because shoes have Legos... been invented for so many years. Like, <laughs> centuries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the time period we're talking about here, John. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, great. Guys, that's fantastic. What I'm saying is, like, we came from we gave we came from water apes. We invented yep. shoes, and then our bodies are like, well, Dude, we don't need all these calluses now. Right. And then we de-evolved because we didn't need them anymore. We're taking de-evolved. we're taking that we're we're taking that space out for something better. If you could control your evolution, what would you change? Crit, hold on, hold on. I'm not done yet. Wouldn't it have made more <laughs> sense that we got webbed feet? We're not swimming apes. We're talking about we river just... apes. Yeah. Yeah, we're not swimming. We're on the coastline. What do you mean we're not swimming? And like Oh, maybe we are. <laughs> There's that wolf pack that swims. Um, Do they have they web paws? Have... No. Oh. Well, how long have they been swimming? Like a couple years. <laughs> have you guys heard about this? Uh, there's a, it's, they call it a cryptid now because um, just people, indigenous people in Africa talk about this. I'd never heard about this. Uh, it's just a, a water cat. And it's not like a special cat that swims around and, and is like pussy. webbed feet or anything. It's just a it's just a big cat that a, that tint like similar to how jaguars do it in South America. There isn't really a cat that does that in uh, Africa, except for stories of this cat that people say isn't a lion or a leopard or a cheetah or anything, but it swims around and will attack people from the river. Hmm. Hmm. I was thinking of something a little more sensual and fairy tale like. Like a young African child peers through <laughs> the tall grass and sees this cat just bathing in the river. And it's like he's, right. he's looking at something maybe he shouldn't be, but it's too... It's like that scene It's too sensual to look away. Um, the scene from Naruto. 
Uh, There's a scene from Naruto where uh, a much too young, I don't remember her name, is shown to the audience and Naruto as she bathes. Hanada? Under a waterfall. I don't remember this at all. I don't remember her name. It's and the I one think he I'd remember eventually marries. women that are way too young exposing themselves. Jesus. I know you would. <laughs> uh, it's the one that he eventually marries. Whatever the hell her name is. Hinata. There you go. It's Hinata. I don't remember this. I don't, we watched the whole show. I don't remember this scene. It's a dog shit show. The whole it's show not is not a dog good show. <laughs> it's not a good show. My my memory. The manga is probably better. My my memory's been like I've joked about like oh, all the concussions, dude. A couple of my couple of my associates, my favorite associates are the ones that I gaslight, and a couple of them <laughs> came up to me, <laughs> came up to me and <laughs> were talking to me about. Uh, they were talking to me about this joke that I made. Uh, and I made them believe that this guy had kissed another guy that no longer works there. Okay. <laughs> and that, that had happened, but like, they remember this vividly and it was like one of the funniest things to them. I had no memory of this and I gaslight them so much apparently that they couldn't tell if I was with them or not. <laughs> <laughs> or were you still gaslighting them? Or was I still gaslighting them? Exactly. Wow. One of one of the only pleasures that I, I get from life is when somebody tells me a funny thing that I said that I didn't remember. Mm. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I am funny. <laughs> <laughs> My first no, thought was this. I have bad news for you, John, because I'm, I'm about to like remind you of something That's pretty fine. dire right now. That's fine. Okay, let me finish uh, this real fast. It's your corner. That's, that's fine. Okay. I said, give me a minute. It's your corner. I was also about to bring up the fact that it is his corner. I mean, listen, we don't have to transition to corners. I felt like we were having a great time. If you want your corner to be no corner, that's fine, John. That's your opinion. Yeah, Remember? but then I as think you're going to As long as you're not, take... like, pretending that you didn't forget. Yeah, but you're <laughs> going to, like, take this weird amount of pride where, like, you're setting the new trend. Because you already announced, like, hey, I don't want to do a corner. And then that means I'm following your trend. And if anything, I ain't a follower. I have I been on record. Go. I've been on record about the need to abolish the corner and just go back to a yeah. free flowing conversation. Okay. All right. I disagree. Are you looking for allies in this right now? Are you looking for somebody to side with you? Cody? If you'd like to. All right. What's well, in it look for me? somewhere else. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Hold on a second. Is this like becoming like a bipartisan thing? I don't know what bipartisan means. I, I don't want to like work with <laughs> lobbyists, John, for this podcast. Huh? I already got enough politics on this channel from that one episode of Double Buff Double Feature. You're gonna have to <laughs> remind me which episode that was. Oh my god, the cowboy it's your one. corner. <laughs> oh yes. Remember right. I screamed, I crossed the aisle for this, and everyone laughed. Everyone thought it was the funniest <laughs> thing ever. And they're like, Scott, look at you. Like, we don't deserve your talent. I'm not saying that I can be bought. But I am saying that you could offer me a price, Cody, and I could take your side on this. <laughs> that sounds a lot like being bought. <laughs> I can't be bought, but <laughs> rent is due. Okay, well, what's your corner? What's my corner? Let me. You tell me your guess, corner, okay. and I'll tell you if I want to talk about it or not. Okay, I want to talk about a time that a video game fucked you over. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to buy me, or no, you want to talk about it? Uh, both, I guess. Oh. <laughs> well, this is backfired. Oh. Um, <laughs> now you have no cards. <laughs> all no. of your all of your advantage is gone. Uh, he said no. Which is a shame, too, because I have a story immediately. Oh, um. <laughs> he just really doesn't uh, want to share it. Um, so trees, right? Cody, <laughs> let's, let's talk about trees. <laughs> I can talk about trees for days. <laughs> you know, just the that, that, that lived thick, bonsai tree. moss-covered trunk, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the best part of a tree is when you scrape off the bark on the outer layer. Oh, you get in you that get juicy, supple, hardwood. inner layer of the wood there. When the Have you ever tapped a tree, Cody? Out? What's up? Tap trees daily, Have you ever bro? tapped a tree? <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> I wonder if 
I, I don't know anything about the process. Can you just tap a tree and get that get that sweet sap, and then it's just done? Like I've I been, I've thought shit? about this for a lot, dude. There's no strings attached. I've <laughs> done some research into this. Everybody talks about maple syrup. Uh, yeah. And you get maple syrup from distilling maple sap. Yeah. Right. Apparently it takes a whole lot of sap to get uh, maple syrup. Yeah. But does it. plenty of other trees produce sap. And I'm like, could you just get, like, pine syrup from a pine tree? So I did some digging, and apparently you can, but the problem is they call pine syrup turpentine. <laughs> and it's, oh. it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> What is pine tar? Is that the same thing? Pine tar is basically pine sap. Yes, I think so. Okay. I've um, heard the term pine tar, and, and uh, that, that question pine tar is, isn't... I only know it in baseball. Because it's what I they think that's the I've heard of it. Mm, yeah. Isn't, uh... <laughs> was... was uh, isn't the sap of the rubber tree used to make natural rubber? There's Can a we talk tree? for a second about how Chris Pine could have been a Pokemon professor? <laughs> <laughs> could we talk about how Chris Pine, if you distill him down, you get Chris <laughs> Turpentine? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can't talk about huh. that, actually. I don't know. Yeah, I can't. I <laughs> My can't probation really officer says I can't talk about it anymore <laughs> in public. So, guys, I've started oh. experimenting. Um, oh, yeah. Is this PG? We know. <laughs> and uh, so I have nail polish on one of my fingers. Chris, I don't like I'm, this phase of you. I'm going <laughs> to stop. I'm just going to let you know. Out me as much as you want. I'm probably about to judge you. <laughs> <laughs> I will reserve judgment. What color? Uh, It's uh candy apple red. It's hard to keep <laughs> reserving here. I think my tongue's bleeding. <laughs> how can, how in the world? What? Uh, I mean, you do you, obviously, but you can't expect me to just sit here, sit idly by, and not feel something about this. <laughs> like if I became a glove guy, if I just suddenly became a glove guy, like, and I show up to you guys wearing leather <laughs> gloves, you're gonna be like. What the f*** are you doing, You go Scott? through your Michael Jackson phase and you just got one white glove all the time. <laughs> if you show up with painted nails, I'm going to be like, what the f*** are you doing, Chris? Chris, if you show up to the D&D session with painted nails, you better come fucking black-faced so you're as much of a drow as you can. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. All right. I want, I want the ears okay. and everything. Chris is, I mean, John's talking cos cosplay here. Yeah. Right. I could wear like a big, uh, like <laughs> you wear hat the, with a feather in it. You know, you wear you wear the uh, the gross pigeon masks. <laughs> yeah, the uh, what uh, the plague mask. There we go. Got it. Figured it out. Oh, oh, okay. The plague That's doctor? too cool, though. That <laughs> That's is too, too cool. That is well, I want to wear those like Krotos hard to breathe in awesome. pigeon masks. But he's not a pigeon. Right. He's a he's a, he's a real bird. I'm a real Pigeons bird. are real birds. I say good for you, Chris. I'm happy that you are expressing yourself in different ways. It's like that song. I want you to know that he is legally obligated to say that. Yeah, my probation <laughs> officer says I can't oh. <laughs> I can't disparage other people's lifestyles anymore. <laughs> Not after what happened last time. Yeah, Speaking after the hate crime charge. Speaking of disparaging lifestyle choices, I put 140 hours into Boulder's Gate 3. <laughs> 140 hours. Okay. And I told myself when I bought the game, I had COVID between Christmas and New Year's. It was terrible. I, I was that. dying. I needed a distract. On day one of testing positive for COVID, I took vacation the whole rest of the week. There was no way I felt like it was going to be the end of me. And I Real quick, needed something. Before you get any further, I know what you're doing, and I don't approve. But go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can count his support. Oh out. my God! The top left of my vision just said Cody disapproves. 
<laughs> oh, should get that checked out. Yeah, this is bad. So here's the thing. All right, I bought Boulder's Gate three to pass the time, and in that one week, it was magnificent. I spent seventy hours, ten hours a day playing the game, and I felt like a kid again. I was, I was just engrossed in the game. I was doing everything for the first time. I named, I, I took the name Tab, which is the generic name of the game. But then I got this uh this whirlwind blade, and I renamed my character the Tavmanian Devil, and it was <laughs> it was a great character. He was awesome, and he was everything I wanted That's him to like be. That's like the most creative thing you've ever done, John. Thanks, man. I know, but here's the <laughs> thing. Here's the thing. Okay, this character was amazing. He was a dual wielding scimitar guy that was all fighter. Uh, dexterity build, and there was this uh, armor in the I mean, game. He couldn't have been that amazing. That he couldn't even he couldn't even carry a heavy item. He couldn't even carry. You know, he what are we couldn't. About? He didn't. He couldn't carry a lot. But that's what Mama K was there for. And Lazo. Well, apparently not though. Uh, apparently not. I know how the story ends. But he had this AC. I think at the end of the game he had uh, an AC of like twenty six or something. Um, and he was just this monster. He would jump into the middle of combat. Everybody would swarm him. He would do his whirlwind attack and just uh, destroy everything around him. I played through the whole game, uh, except the final mission. And the reason for that <laughs> is because the game f***ed me. Or Scott would believe that I f***ed myself. You absolutely f***ed yourself. When you go to camp in the game, there's three items that you need at the end of the game. You need three stones before you go into literally the final mission. And the game will not let you go in without them. And when I was in camp in the first act of the game, it's separated into three acts. In the first act, I picked up two chests so that when I was at the camp, I could have this neat little organization. There was the main camp chest that was like all about supplies and stuff for long rest and all this jazz. I had a second chest that was there for all my uh, all my story based items, all my legendary items, stuff like that. And then I had a third chest that was there for magic items that I didn't want to get rid of, but I didn't want to use. And I go into the second act of the game. I finish that. I do the boss fight there. You get one of the three stones. You go into the third act where you get the other two stones. And right when I finish getting the third stone. I go back to my camp, and the two chests that I got in the first act are gone. And I'm like, where the fuck are these? This doesn't make any sense. And I spent over an hour. At this point in my life, I had played the game for 135 hours. 135 hours of this game. Give or take, like, maybe five hours, because I think, I think there was a time that I left it on when I left to go do something. And I desperately... I desperately looked for where the stone could be. I Googled it. I went to Reddit. I I pleaded. He went to the my second man. page of Google. I went I pleaded to my main man Scott. And he looked at me and he said, You've done this to yourself because you're a goddamn re <laughs> And so the only thing that I found that explained what had happened to the first stone that I initially got, which was in the chest that I held all my story-based items in. Apparently, there is a bug that can happen in the game where when oh, you no. go from Act 2 to Act 3, you can... Part of the game is once you go to Act 3, you cannot go back. But there is apparently a bug in the game that once you do go to Act 3, there is a chance that any chests or anything that you have laying around the camp can respawn back in their original act and everything in them goes there too and you can no longer return to those areas meaning that you can't grab that stuff and all of that equipment is gone John, 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 John. I can solve this right now there's not a bug Tav is an idiot and didn't pack it <laughs> so here's the thing Tav Announcing the thing. Didn't want anybody else to have the stone. So he put it in the chest in the camp. Because he didn't want to just like 
I don't know. I, I could see a part of the game where somebody steals it from you. And I was right. Because you can straight up go to uh you can go to this tower that the I don't want to spoil the game for anybody who hasn't played it yet in six months, uh, and the fifty viewers that we ever get. You can go to this place where they take your belongings and arrest you, potentially. So I'm like, I'm like, hey, I made the right call. Now my like he could have t- totally taken the stone. And even one of my players, one of my characters, gave that dialogue. They're like, dude, I'm glad we didn't have the stone on us. That could have been bad. So and- here's the thing, all right? You all right, the game looks for that, and I was in the right. I made the smart move. Tav's not an idiot. You're a jackass. But guys, oh, oh I have an idea. I fought all of all eight of the gyms, and I ha- I have badges, but I don't want to keep them on me. I'm I'm afraid you're of keeping so, all eight badges okay. on me at once. So I'm going to put them in my bag and leave them at my mom's house. Here's the thing. All right, that's that's a stupid analogy. <laughs> That's exactly the same thing. It is the thing you need to I don't even the know game. my mom in this game. It's a role playing game. How do you not know that? A hundred and forty hours. I think you don't it'd be know safer your mom is? if we just keep the infinity stones with the infinity gauntlet at home <laughs> in Avengers Base. You would keep when we go to fight things. You would keep all of them together. That's what you did. No! I went back to base to collect them. What are you talking? Regardless, 138 hours of my life gone like that. And I thought, oh, man, I I got desperate. I started looking at getting mods to try to, like, bring it in. And I'm like, oh, console commands. That's it. That's the that's the thing. I have it on PC. That's the first thing I told him was like, oh, surely there's console console commands. You can just spawn it in. Mm -hmm. No, console commands have not been released on the game yet. Nice. Right. Good yeah. job. So, Oof. this character, the Tavmanian Devil, he will forever live on in my soul. Uh, but this character retired, leaving the job unfinished. And man, I felt demoralized. I hated everything. I I had a genuine moment where I just got up and I went into my dark living room. And I just, hands on head, like, trying to figure out my life. Literal days of my life were now gone. Damn near a f***ing week. Well, you still had the days. You still had the fun playing the game. Yeah, yeah, but here's... I want to take a quick poll. Starting from Cody, Cody, Chris, and then me. (laughs) We already know my opinion. Whose fault is it? Game or John? I think it's John's because yeah. like I would have just, I don't know, loaded a previous save. Problem solved. Oh, the, the problem was his, his next previous you save think was like I didn't try 10 that? hours ago or something. Did you All, not? So, so the game will go back and it will, uh, it will only hold so many saves and it will delete previous ones like from the oldest up. So the, Lame. the earliest the auto saves, I presume the early uh, auto saves, quick saves, all of it. Um, it, it will delete manual saves. Yep. The earliest Surely save not. I had was halfway through Act Three, and maybe that's my fault for quick saving so much. Maybe it is. I don't think I quick save all that much, but if there's just a quick little button to hit there, maybe I do. Yeah, you do seem like the kind of guy to like. Not necessarily that you abuse quick saving, but if it's just so easy, I can just hit the button. I feel like you'd be the kind of guy who just hits the button. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Final Fantasy X hurt me a lot in the in the art of save often because when I first when I first started playing Final Fantasy X, I remember that I got like halfway through the game and hadn't saved it because I was a dumb like eight year old or whatever. And yep, like eight hours of my life lost just right there. Yep. Uh- Zero episodes since John brings up Final Fantasy X. Uh, Chris, what is your opinion on the verdict? Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, Cody. Now that the 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 saving <laughs> thing is there, what what is your full opinion still? Is it still my fault, Cody? 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 I want it. Cody. I, so, Cody. so 
I really do. I mean this, John. You want it to be my fault? I really you want, want it to be, it to be your fault. But okay. the way you describe the saves, that kind of sounds like the game's fault to me. I don't know, man. Yeah, we'll get to me. We'll get to me. Chris. W- 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 Chris. So, as a hoarder of video game items, you should have had that stuff on you. We have carrying capacity. I'll remind you. That's why you give it to Mama K. You give it to Mama K, she can carry all the heavy, important stuff. Yeah. I played Skyrim. Bro, I this is Baldur's okay. Gate 3. The difference... This is a different game. All right. <clears throat> Chris, I get it. I watched you play Skyrim when you lived with me. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you, like, you're the literally... one who, who made John and I figure out that you can go slightly faster if you crouch and draw a bow yep. while you're over-encumbered. <laughs> it's be... actually... Annoying. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and debunk this, too. Um, Actually, Scott's going to have a rebuttal, and that's fair. You cannot move once you become fully encumbered. Lame. In in Boulder's game? In in BG3. Oh, I don't know. I've never played the game, unfortunately. I'm poor, and I don't have the equipment to run it. Uh, The easy rebuttal to that is you can just send everything to camp, but then your camp supplies get messy, and it gets hard to find things. Yeah. Wah. The my one I say I I say this a lot. One of the few complaints I have about the game is the inventory management. It is all fucking on you. Yeah. And I I don't maybe this is a hot take. I think it's not fucking fun to organize I, your inventory. I feel like I feel like what you just said there defends me cuz it was on me and I did it the way I wanted to. It was on you and you took the literally <laughs> the goal of the game and you're like, "You know what?" I'm going to put it in this chest. And I you, didn't need I, it at I the understand. time. I understand that thinking about it this way gamifies it. It really does kind of sort of take you out of it. But there is no f-ing way in hell that I would take the most important items in a game and, like, not leave them on me at all times. Because I know. I know the game's going to f*** me. I if had I just leave Shadowheart it with me the whole time. And I'm going to loot. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> Thanks. Incredible. <laughs> Point is, I never in a million years would have taken... It's the reason you can't deposit key items in a Pokemon game. I I do agree with that. It it, uh, it frustrates me that key items uh, have weight to them to begin with. Right. Because I wish that they would just like, hey, you have this, you know. Like, mm-hmm. you don't need to worry about doing anything with it. But, like, there's a key item that you get at the end of Act one or the middle of act two i forget and it weighs like 20 pounds and i'm like man i don't remember what it is but you can you can use it pretty much immediately afterwards and just get rid of it i didn't know that at the time and my guy had a 80 pound weight limit to him and most of it was being taken up by his heavy ass armor wow john gunk courts in session john (sighs) yeah I deem you guilty of being a dumbass. <laughs> Damn. There you go, Cody. You got what you wanted. This isn't what I wanted. This isn't. This is a system gone awry. This if is you... justice being served. Man. So, anyways, I started playing the game again. But yeah, yeah, you still had fun. You still had those times. Sure, it sucks that in Tad all, didn't get in to all reality. The game. So, like. But- I had I I had this drive to finish the game because I knew it was distracting me from like life properly life. prep and prep uh, session prepping. There we go. I got it uh, to session. real life session prepping. And like I feel like you guys saw like I, I hope I think you guys saw, but most of that session was ad libbed. And I even told you at the end. I wish I hadn't told you this. That hey, I forgot this key thing that probably would have swayed your opinion. This is totally random. Did you know that zero? The dog from uh, Nightmare Nightmare for Christmas. Yeah, he does not have a red bulb on his nose. It's a pumpkin. Oh, really? Shocking! I didn't. I did not know that. Mandela effect. Uh, just, hmm. Okay. Um, that one's more understandable to me because, uh, like, I watched that movie on VHS when I was nine. And it just looks There's like There's no way little, in hell I saw that was a pumpkin. Little, that was just a ball. bright light. Yep. Yep. Hmm. Regardless. Yeah. 
I can share for... some of, of my experiences with video games. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, are we? <laughs> wow, we're cutting it short yeah. this time. Goodbye, everybody. Well, thank God. I don't know. What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your what are we going to do? Right <laughs> are we going to do, are we going to do like a whole council thing where like we judge him on this one? Absolutely. Or was that just of me? <laughs> okay. No, I'm, I, I intend, I, that was my goal from the start of this was to judge all of your mistakes and or not mistakes. I don't sure. think I like this side of you, Scott. Great. Well, you're the one regardless, that brought up the corner, What's, what's your, regardless, Cody, go for it. Uh, we've talked about the biggest one that I can think of on the previous episode. Hey, look at that. We've already run out of things to talk about. We've known each other for decades, and it's only been less than 70 episodes. We are repeating things ad nauseum. Incredible. Uh, Halo Reach. No, not Halo Reach. Halo, Halo 3 ODST Firefight. Getting the Vidmaster uh, Challenge yeah. Endure. It was me, John, my brother Kyle, a uh, friend of the podcast, and another one of our friends doing the Vidmaster. And Kyle and I were playing split screen online, and our connection got dropped. So we timed out of the firefight session, and John and our friend weren't able to finish the Vidmaster, even though we got to, like, the final stage, like, the last round in the our internet cut out. Yep. And then John and this friend and two other of our, our friends got the Vidmaster without me and Kyle. So, you know, 15 years later, I still don't have Vidmaster Endure. And uh, that's not really the game screwing me over. That's really my poor internet connection screwing me over. But I Is have, it really, a, have really grudge. difficult to get back to that point? Oh, yeah. It was real tough. It took us like an hour or two of a grind just to get there. Just for that one attempt. Yeah. Probably yeah. an hour. Because you had to play it on like, I don't know if it was the highest difficulty, but maybe the second highest difficulty. I think difficulty. it was. I think it was. I think it was legendary. Yeah. And mm, man, it just dozens and dozens of attempts. And right when we were about to get it, that didn't. Hey, I was serious about streaming this. Yeah, if you, if you really if you really want to do it, we just got to find the time. I'm busy Your that silence day. Silence says a lot. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't think he, I don't think he's interested. Like it's one of the I I'm I'm speaking for you at this point, but I have felt something that I think might be similar where my story is uh, is goddamn it really doesn't matter. The only reason it matters to me is cuz I know it's just right there and hopefully it will get patched. Um, when I, I got a PS5 and then that month that I got it, the fruit, one of the games we got, one of the monthly games we got was Power Wash Simulator. Mm hmm. And it's just like everything lined up. I don't know what the hell were they thinking? It obviously their playership increased greatly because the game was one of the monthly games on PlayStation. So everybody's in the middle of playing it. And then they re I like two weeks after the game had been released as a monthly game, they released an update. So I was more than halfway through the campaign and an update happens. This update, for whatever reason, undid all of the previous progress as far as the final trophy for the game is concerned. So I have all of the other trophies for the game and I've completed the campaign but I didn't get the last trophy, so I miss out on the platinum. Again, it really doesn't matter. But it still sits there in the back of my head. Uh, because I know it's just so easy. It'd be such an easy thing. And now, I'm jaded. I could just delete my progress and play the game again. I have that much free time. It's not like I want to do that. But I have that much free time that I could just do that if I really wanted to get the f***ing platinum. But I'm like, what if they do it again? What if there's another update that does it again <laughs> right when I'm the f middle of it? Uh, okay. That's rough. Right. Yeah. What's uh? What's everybody's verdict on this one? On um, uh, Cody's or Scott's? Uh, on Scott's. It's probably Scott's fault because he could just you know, I, go and do the platinum. He could, right? He. Could I mean, just you go could also just do it again. Who me? No, no Cody. <sighs> the servers are probably dead. But you could have then. I'm just hearing excuses. Maybe I just wasn't strong enough. Hmm. 
Yeah. Mm. It's about how hard you get hit and keep moving. <laughs> Do the achievements not carry over to the MCC? No. It's a whole new set. Yeah, of oh. course not. It's a different game. Th- that's actually one of the, the craziest things that happened to me. I say crazy. It's just really silly. Um, there is a PS5 version of some of the games that we played on PS4, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I had, yeah, yeah. Uh, this For this example, it was Genshin Impact. When I turned on Genshin Impact on the, the PS5 version, I immediately got like 86 trophies and a platinum. Really? Because I gotten all of the trophies before on the PS4 version. Oh, and it's just like flags on your account saying, hey, you've completed this. Absolutely. And Interesting. Like, uh, uh, roughly, uh, every time, I hadn't changed the setting. I have it now because I, I don't care. But normally it will give you, it will make a screenshot whenever you get a trophy. As soon as I turned on <laughs> Genshin Impact, it made 86 screenshots. And there was immediately like 1,000 megabytes of screenshots from just the game getting those trophies. All of the exact oh, same frame. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, literally just what a guy standing on a street. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, that's um a point where a video game actually helped me. I was, this was way back in the day on the 360. I was playing the orange box in Team Fortress 2, which oh. Team Fortress 2 on Xbox was a terrible experience. Valve yeah, I've heard did, really bad things. Valve didn't support the platform at all. They put all of their work into the Steam version. And so right. uh, I actually joined just a random matchmaking game and it was a like a glitch lobby. And as soon as I joined, I immediately unlocked every achievement in Team Fortress 2. Oh, <laughs> So that's something that went my way. Damn. When you said glitch lobby, how did my you head feel about immediately that? went to uh, something else? Uh, what would that be? Well, it's not even a joke. I just I thought John was going to say something, and I didn't want to run it. Want to interrupt him? Ah. What were you going to say, something? John? Uh, I was just going to ask you how did you feel like that all those achievements were just unlocked for you? Uh, great at the time. Because there was yeah. no way I was getting any of these achievements. I was you dog have, you have no <laughs> at Team honor. Fortress 2. You have no honor. No, no honor. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? What I was going to talk about, when you said Glitch Lobby, my, my mind immediately went to this goddamn anime I've been watching that's honestly pretty okay. Very Sword low Art stakes. Online? No, dog, total dog shit, that one. Um, this one's called Shangri-La Frontier. Mm. What? And it's just a it's really low stakes. It's just a guy playing a video game. He's not like trapped in the video game. He just likes the video game and he's playing it and having fun. Uh okay. but uh the premise of the entire anime is that video games are very uh you know advanced now. It's it's the, in the near future and there's like full VR, you know, things and where you just basically can live in the game functionally. And when that happened, it was similar to the video game boom in the 80s. People just started throwing games out there in the 80s, and there was, like, licensed and all this kind of, like, third-party shit. and that was uh, what led to the first video game collapse, was these games sucked absolute dick. But this world proposes an idea where, what if, even if the game is total dog shit, what if there was a, a group of people, first off, the peripheral is too advanced and good for it to totally break the industry, uh, and second of all, what if there was just a group of people who really just got in to that aspect of the game? They love that it's so buggy and glitchy and nothing works, and they like that that's kind of the game for them. And so the main character is like a glitch hunter type guy where he'll play this fighting game, and at least as far as this group of glitch hunters is concerned, the game is to wield the glitches so you can win. And it's just a really... I really like that concept. I, I like the idea of it's kind of like speed running, but competitively with your friends, like in just a fighting game. <laughs> I, I I like that idea. I, and I, I'd be curious if something like that could ever happen in real life. Regardless. That when you said glitch lobby, that's immediately what I thought of was like a guy ah. like, abusing the idea of, Oh, I can slip into the wall and, and shoot a guy from the walls or something. Oh, there was plenty of that going on. 
for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no clipping and 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 wall hats and and pro stratting. Um, uh, apparently, there's something like that in Stardew Valley. W- wall glitching. Yes, pro stratting. Uh, so you can. Uh, Did you unlock every achievement in, in Stardew Valley? Yeah. No. Uh, because I'm I'm trying not to to break the game. I want to play it like how it's meant to be played, but there's this thing where you can go right up to where the path ends, uh, right before it starts another path. Um, and you can um take your scythe and you can keep just sl- uh scything, um, because it moves you like a pixel, and so eventually it moves you past um the cutoff point mm. where it would send you reminds to the, me of that uh, to the final next... fantasy speed running yeah. tactic was, we were talking about yeah. uh yeah. where it uh it, it will um so you get to ignore going to the next part of the map and then you can move around out of bounds um and so you can access areas in the game that you shouldn't be able to access um uh yet so what a story yep Fantastic. have you guys seen that live coding shit they do for like total game breaking on like pokemon roms no Mm-mm. where they mm. they can do crazy menuing that literally alters the code of the game oh and yeah, yeah, the yeah, code yeah. Of the game i've seen that time. with um super mario world and I, uh, I was, ocarina they just of time did a task bot run yeah they did a task bot run for ocarina of time i think last year and it it was incredible. They they recoded the game to like be a different game. It was just incredible. Hmm. I I kind of want to check this out. I've seen I've seen like a Pokemon speedrun uh where they use the menus like right when they get into a combat or like right when somebody sees them to like bug it out and fly and then rearrange the items and that would like recode the game. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, they do, there's some crazy, like, very particular menuing stuff where you're, like, clicking on certain things and moving certain things in other places and that it confuses the game in such a way, basically, that the way the speed run works, as far as I know, is you totally destroy the code and, again, you close the menu and the game's like, all right, you won. Hmm, wow. Interesting. That's... So, like, theoretically... The the very the absolute fastest task bot run, which is the tool assisted speed run bot run you could do on something like Pokemon Red, is as soon as you get access to a menu, you could get to the credits. That's nuts, dude. Because that's like as that's as soon as you get out of the Professor Oak conversation, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. That's know, wild. But it'd be around that time. There's a lot of politics that goes into speed running. I remember there was a bit of a controversy about Pokemon Red and Blue where this guy discovers the fast text glitch where basically there was some inputs that led to the text that of the like the scrolling text of people talking to scroll like three times faster than it normally does. And it's like obviously that's going to save you a whole bunch of time. Absolutely. And so this guy was like, hey, I just found this glitch. And everybody's like... Uh, it, it's kind of cool, I guess, but a- apparently whenever a new glitch gets appeared, there needs to be, it needs to be, like, peer-reviewed by the community call, to see if it's... They call the council. Uh, see, yeah, see if it's, like, allowed to be used in a <laughs> run, and everybody was like, yeah, it's probably not that big of a deal, you can do it, and then the guy who found this it ended up... This man just blew away the record by four minutes. Yeah, yeah, he, like, he set a world record using this glitch, and then the community reconvened, and they're like, actually, that glitch is not allowed. We strip you of your record. (laughs) It's like, I don't understand the harsh reaction that people have, like, especially outside of the speedrunning community. I don't understand the harsh reaction to glitches. Like, like, oh, but you broke the game. That's not even a speedrun. But, like, so you're telling me. That you'd rather just watch a guy play Super Mario Brothers? Well, that's well, that's also the thing is there's just different categories. There's any percent yeah. and there's glitchless. So if you that's fine. If you think that, 
go look at this record then. <laughs> I remember the first the first one that made me try to figure out where I was on the fence for that specific topic was Portal, a Portal speedrun, mm-hmm. yeah. where Scott told me he was like he was like yeah they they beat the game in like six minutes or something like that, and I'm like yeah, some ins- no some insanely f- time. no. F- way i'm like they beat that whole game like they went through the whole gladys fight and everything and you're like you're like well they did like this thing with the elevator where they they went like halfway through and then they got out of the map and i'm like well that's not fair that's cheating (laughs) and that was like that was the beginning of the of the whole conversation for me like my uh, competitive nature flared in that moment i'm like who the does that person think they are they're not even playing the game right even the glitchless portal is only like 15 minutes yeah, it's really okay. Small. Yeah, all right, great. Like, I mean, if you watch the okay. Taz it run, me forty-five minutes. If you don't know by now, I I actually really love the Taz runs. Uh, if you watch the Taz run for Portal That's without the glitches, assisted thing. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's safe. Like you don't. It's just Stroby. You have no <laughs> clue what's going on. He <laughs> dude, walks it's, through it's and a he's like, and then he's in the elevator. It's a high, dude. Like after I watched the first time, I watched it happen. After you showed it to me and told me about it, I was like, I was like, this is stupid and this is disrespectful to games. <laughs> and then like a couple years later, I realized that I didn't need to be stalwart. I just needed to redistribute my mindset and like open it up. And I was like, after I watched it again, I was like, man, you know what? That is actually pretty cool that someone took the time to break the f- out of this game. There's only even like three games I can think of that I would want to watch someone just play it fast. Oblivion. Like, <laughs> no, no. Super Mario 64, because the movement is so incredible. That is pretty there's, good. It, there's such a robust amount of movement. I would watch a speed run of somebody just getting all the stars, no glitches. Because it's just fun to see how effective and efficient you can be with the movement. The I remember, because that's the one that has like the uh, backwards jumping on the stairs, right? Mm-hmm. The uh, the BLJs, the backwards long jumps. Yep. Dude, yeah. I just remember... I remember the first time I found whoa, out whoa, about whoa, that. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Where <are you> those <laughs> <laughs> the first time I found out about that was like some short on YouTube that just like blew up where uh, the dude was like struggling to get the jump to go down. And his girlfriend was trying to assume his girlfriend, the girl behind him was trying to give him tips. And he just looked back and he's like, fine, you know what? If you know it, then you do it. And she did it in the first try. Yeah. And you just watch her like look at him like I'm better than you. There's another uh, Games Done Quick just recently, and they, he did a, I talked to you guys about this, he did a goddamn speed run, a 16-star uh, speed run on a drum set. Yep. That's awesome. And he did a BLJ on the f-ing drum set, and it was crazy. <laughs> was it like a rolling snare or something? Like, how did he do it? He, it was like an electric drum, drum set, but like, it was actually making noise for mm-hmm. the listener. And uh, he, he had, I didn't get to see the setup, but the way they explained it was it was literally hooked up to a hard copy in 64. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't a ROM. It wasn't an emulator. Oh, I meant like, uh, what was the input? Like, how did he do the input? Oh, I don't know. Like, I, I have no idea how you do it with a normal controller. He was just like hitting the hitting the symbols and, and like being really particular. Watching the really fun thing, though. Was uh, you had to like grab Bowser's tail and spin around. It was yeah. fun as hell to watch him spin around with the drums because he he had to hit the like down to, like, left do the up right down left up right mm-hmm. drums to spin him around, and it was fun to see him like roll that. And it was it's just great. Chris, oh, yeah. you didn't tell us a time where a game screwed you over. Do you even have a story? No, because I know that every time a game screwed me over, it's just me being bad. Okay, well, th- well, think of a think of a reason. Tell me about the we'll worst time. You. Yeah, tell me about the time. Tell me about the worst time that you felt like you got wronged in a video game. Well, the most recent, one, and it better not involve me. The most recent one was in <laughs> Minecraft. Um, and okay, it's your fault. <laughs> so, so they added the warden, right? Because Minecraft is a prison. Is. Um, so they uh, the this. warden is the one that's like way deep down, right? Yeah, and so okay, I'm on like one-eyed fish guy. Yes. No, no, that's the elder guardian. Yeah, the uh, warden's a new yeah. boss. He is. He's a maw. Um, is the best way to describe it. Never seen him. But anyway, you have to like crouch around in this area, or he'll be signaled. And he'll come and he'll kill you, and like 
one attack. And so his senses are based on hearing. Right. He's like a T Rex. So I'm I'm putting wool down on top of the sensors that um signal him to come get you. And I'm I think I'm all in the clear. Like I've done everything in the area. And so I open up this door and I go down the these ladders to get to this chest and I didn't I couldn't see that there was one of the the uh, auditory sensors in in the place so he comes and he kills me through the wall nice job and then can he travel through walls uh no but he can attack through them oh um Mm. so i lost Mm. all my enchanted diamond gear and now i'm playing on a different world (laughs) oh you just gave up definitely a you problem or was it hardcore you never, you don't, you would never play hardcore. Uh, well, remember all those times I kept trying to make a, uh, I kept trying to stream a hardcore playthrough of Minecraft, and I couldn't make it past like a week <laughs> in game, not in real life. <laughs> you make it past I, a I week. don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know this. I was going to make a video, it either, and then I could never like play it because I'm too bad at it. That's tough. Oh, I do kind of remember this. Mm-hmm. I just thought of another time where a game screwed me. Um, Assassin's Creed Feathers? No, no. Who was the one what? who got screwed over on Assassin's Creed Feathers? That was that Cody, was but he's just an idiot. Maybe. Potentially. Yeah, or we, maybe we not. guessed. I don't, actually don't know. Yeah, yeah. Regardless, um, the I was playing Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire is one of my podcast games where I just like listen to something while playing Slay the Spire. Uh, it's like this uh, roguelike deck deck builder type of thing. Mm-hmm. And I had one of my strongest decks that I've ever had. And there's a final boss that... Uh, it, it was a very power-heavy deck, which is a like a, a one-time-use card in the battle that gives you a permanent buff, usually, in for that battle. And uh, the game... I think the game does this thing where it'll, like, scan your deck to see what its contents are. And the contents of your deck deter- help determine the odds of what final boss you turn into, you run into. And there's a final boss that, uh, I was playing the robot guy. There's a final boss that specifically gets stronger whenever you cast a power. And uh, I had a load of powers. That was the whole deck. And that was fine. Like, I was anticipating fighting him. He's a relatively easy boss to, be- to begin with. But I didn't get a lot of chances throughout my runs to remove cards from the deck. And uh, I just had a load of powers that did a lot of damage over time. Like, I didn't have any burst, really, unless I got really lucky. But because I didn't get any chances to remove cards, I also had all of the normal... I had almost all of the basic cards that the deck starts with, like the one-mana deal six damage cards that just are functionally useless for my deck. And... Uh, I got to the end boss, and he I kill his first phase and his little buddies. And then the second phase, like, the, w- the way the boss works is every time you use a power, he just gets strength, so he does more damage. And up unto this point, I was using the uh, uh, powers as a crutch, because there's a certain power that makes it so that the next instance of damage you take is completely negated. And I had, like, five of those bad boys, and I had a lot of mana. It was just a good deck. But I just, I'm like, all right, I'm going to save all of my, I, I'm going to use two of these buffer cards that, that give me, and uh, I, I ignore damage for the next time. I'm going to use two of these buffer guys and save the last three for the next phase because I know he's going to be hitting like a truck. And he he goes to his next phase. I draw my hand and it's just five one mana deal six cards. And the odds Damn. of that, it was a full deck. And he just one-shot me because I had played so many strengths or so many powers at that point that his strength was through the roof. And he just one-shot me and I died. And, uh, like, I was, it's not, I'm, like, not upset, but, man, the odds of that were insane. The deck had just recycled. I had all these powers still left in the deck and the, I drew the five cards that made sure I died right there. Because if I had drawn one defend and just give me some block, I would have lived. Damn. But here we are. And I wasn't even all that upset. I was more like, oh, man. Huh. Good That's deck, tough. huh? 
because the, the that's kind of the nature of the game is is uh, you do you what the the lo- the most commitment you can give to a single run through is what like half an hour, a bit longer if okay. it's just a slower deck. But arguably, it's like it's fairly quick. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not like League of Legends where you spend an hour playing the game just to lose. But it's interesting that I love roguelikes, but I really hate battle royales. Hmm. Because and my argument for hating them is I hate that I there's nothing to grab onto. There's no commitment. I start the game and I like I get some fresh loot and then I either win or die in twenty minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't give a shit about this. If I'm gonna be spending twenty minutes Maybe that's what it is, because it's not like a Rocket League game is long, but I love Rocket League. So maybe it's like, if every Rocket League game were 20 plus minutes, or I just lose, then maybe I wouldn't like Rocket League. I don't know. I mean, that was what kept me going in Call of Duty for a long time, was most matches were like 10 minutes long. Yeah, real real quick. I mean, that's what Call of Duty wants, too. It's like, it's like... We've talked about this before. It's how Call of Duty is like a uh, uh, slot machine almost, where you're just gambling on being the guy who looked at who looked around the corner first and, sh- and pulled the trigger before the other guy did. Yeah, and that you want that dopamine hit of the tick 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 tick, tick you know, and the and the numbers popping into your face. We got a uh, we got anything to talk about still? <laughs> we just uh. We just gonna sitting in it. Just slowly, the pauses between each other are gonna get longer and longer <laughs> until yeah, yeah. none of us are talking at all. Honestly, this is the podcast if we just that wanna, never ends. If we just want to like slowly fade this out, you know, don't even do an outro. Yeah, like just like slowly fade out I mean, our voices. They already know the podcast is over. We gave an outro like you know a long long time <laughs> ago. So <laughs> I burped. Goodbye, everybody. Anyway, uh, close notes. Cody, definitely you're at fault. Uh, Chris, at fault. Absolutely. You're a do- dog shit p- piece of garbage. You don't play the game right. John, you are at fault. I am obviously perfect. I never do anything wrong. The game screwed me. It's not fair. <laughs> What happened to me? It is it is justice what happened to you three. It is not fair what happened to me.